Hello and welcome to our virtual open day here at um, Munich International School. My name is Lekim and I work here in the admissions office and it's a real pleasure to have so many of you joining us today from different parts of the world. Um, we um, are very happy that we have the opportunity today to bring as much of our school as possible to you during this virtual open day. Um, to help run this open day smoothly, we have a few questions and comments to make. Um, as we have so many of you joining us today, we have muted everyone's microphone. And I would also like to kindly ask everyone to turn off their camera during the session, as this will improve the overall quality of the meeting. During the session, uh, we are confident, we're sure that many of your questions will be answered. However, if towards the end you still have some questions left, then you're invited to post them in the chat function and we will try to answer as many of them as possible. Uh, for those questions who remain unanswered, we'll reach out to you with uh, an answer as soon as possible. Also, I would like to remind you that this session is being recorded and that it will be made available online later. In today's session, you'll be welcomed to MIS by our head of school, Mr. Timothy Thomas, and you will also have the opportunity to meet our junior, middle and senior school principal as well as two of our teachers and we have a very special guest today, Kiara, who is a uh, alumni. Right now, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce and hand over to our head of school, Mr. Timothy Thomas. Thank you very much, Lee Kim. I appreciate the introduction and hello everybody wherever you are in the world. So we have people joining us from all around the globe. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, whatever time it is where you are. My name is Tim Thomas and I'm the head of school at Munich International School. I've had the privilege of serving in this role for eight years. Um, I originally come from the United States, but uh, I studied in Germany as well as in the US and I've lived in Germany for many years and I'm bilingual and I really feel lucky to work in this wonderful school that we'll be presenting to you today. So one of my jobs today is to take you through some very general information about the whole school. I'll move through it quite quickly. If you have any questions about any of it, then please feel welcome to put those questions in the chat and we'll answer some of those questions um, as we go along. And we may answer some of the questions verbally toward the end of today's presentation. So I'm going to open up slides here, I believe. Um, start. Great. So hopefully what you see now um, is our title, um, but also three really important words have to do with who we are as a school. So many years ago, our community came together and we wanted to try to still down the most important things that we think we do as a school with the kids and the families that join us. And we were able to identify three verbs that really guide all of our work, and that is nurture, challenge, and inspire. And if you take our, our mission statement, if you take all of our policies, if you take our curriculum and boil it down to its simplest form so you can communicate to somebody, and so it can guide uh, the further development of practices and help us make decisions, it comes down to those three words. Are we nurturing, challenging, and inspiring everybody who enters our campus? So with that in mind, first of all, a little picture. So this building is on our campus. It's where I am at the moment. It's called our Schloss. Uh, in German that translates roughly as palace, although it's kind of a modest palace, but it's where the school started when it came here to Buchhoff in 1968. Today, the Schloss, the palace, is mostly administrative uh, rooms because in the meantime, built six purpose-built buildings where most of the instruction takes place around our campus. And I'll share a little bit about that with you in just a few moments. The topic like to go through quite rapidly are our role as a leading IV or International Baccalaureate World School. I'd like to share a little bit about our academic results so you have a sense of how our students do um, when they take part in externally moderated examinations. But I'd also like to talk about the fact that we really aim to educate and to help the development of the whole child. So we are a very holistic school and we have a values-based learning environment. I'd also like to say a little 
about our warm, welcoming international community, and also share a little bit about something that's quite special, and that is the beautiful grounds that we have and the wonderful facilities. So, first of all, I have to say, the quality of the education of a school can never exceed the quality of the teachers who deliver that education. And so we put a lot of effort into ensuring that we have teachers here at the school who fit our particular profile and will optimally support children in their growth. So what is that profile? Well, we always look for teachers who first and foremost are very caring. That is the number one priority, that teachers really care about the students who are learning with them. We also look for people who are highly competent pedagogues and educators, people who are really committed to the school and to their children. Because of the kind of school we are, it's especially important that they are culturally respectful. And we look for people who are happy, positive people who enjoy learning and supporting learning in the children they teach. So those wonderful teachers help us to achieve some really excellent academic results. So the IB diploma is the qualification that almost all of our students will leave our school with. So IB stands for International Baccalaureate. It's a program that was developed in Geneva in Switzerland. It's now taught all over the world in thousands of schools. And the top score that students can achieve at the end of grade 12 in the IB diploma is 45 points. Our average score in the class of 2022, so the most recent graduating class, was 37 out of 45 points. And to give you a sense, the global average in schools was 32. But that includes a lot of schools that are highly selective in their uptake. We are not. So we are a general admission school. And so to have an average of 37 points is something that's really quite special. We're really proud of that. We had three students in last year's class who achieved the rare perfect score of 45 points in the IB diploma. That's something that only a tiny fraction of, of students around the world are able to achieve. Um, we had 19 students who got 42 or more points, and that is equivalent to a 1.0 or the highest possible average in the German Abitur. 100% of our students in the class of 2022 were successful in completing the full IB diploma and completing all requirements in passing the examinations, and that compares to a global pass rate of 82%. There's another set of examinations that are quite important. That's at the conclusion of grade 10. This is called the MYP E assessments. And as the E indicates, these are assessments that are done online. And it leads to a qualification called the MYP certificate. The MYP certificate is recognized around the world as a great grade 10 qualification. For example, it's recognized in Germany as the Mittlere Reife. So the highest score on the MYP E assessment is 54. And our students last year, the most recent group, scored 43.9. And to give you a sense, the global average was 37.7. So again, there was a really high level of achievement by students at MIS. 94% um, of the students in grade 10 were successful in, it, in completing all sections of the MYPE assessment, therefore received the MYP certificate, and that compares to a global pass rate of 80%. But as I said, academics is just one part of what we focus on here at the school. We really put a lot of energy into helping students develop their interests, their passion, their balance through all kinds of programming. So for example, we have visual arts, drama, music, and film that are woven into the daily curriculum of the school. After the school day is done, we have more than 60 different activities each season, three seasons of the year, where students can choose to participate in a wide range of different kinds of activities. So for example, in the domain of music, strings, choirs, bands, and an orchestra. In the domain of athletics, football, volleyball, cross country, tennis, rugby, track and field, basketball. There's a long list. And also just lots of high interest activities. So we have beautiful Lake Starnberg just down the hill, and there students will participate in sailing, rowing. We're on a nature preserve, which offers the opportunity for students to engage in climbing, um, nature skills, we have ballet, pottery, computer coding, robotics, a wide range of activities, and a majority of our students will choose to stay late at school so they can participate in this co-curricular programming. 
also want to say a few things real quick about who we are, the MIS community. So we've been around for 56 years, and our school is currently comprised of more than 1,250 students who come from 72 different countries. We have approximately 230 staff who come from 27 different countries. And you may see our name written Munich International School EV, AFAL, and that's an indication that we are a not-for-profit association in Germany. All of the money that comes into our school must be used in the education of the children. So we are completely non-for-profit in all aspects of the school, and we are a parent-owned association. So if you join our school, the parents of all students become members of the association. The association elects a, a group of parents to be the board, and the board, together with me, governs the school. We also have a very active parent-teacher association. It's called the Parent Teacher Verein. That word Verein means association. So they are very active. They welcome new families into the community. They offer all kinds of opportunities for parents to get involved with the school. And they help us organize lots of really important events and activities that students take part in. We have the S Foundation, which supports arts and culture at the school. They help us bring authors and artists to the school to work with our children. We have the MIS Sportverein which is the sport association, so a booster club that helps us out with all of the athletic events at the school. We have a long-standing Tanzania project that's more than 35 years old, and it's a collaboration between MIS, an entire district in Tanzania, and we help build schools there, we help build hospitals, we've been supporting a medical school that trains doctors to work in the region, and in the summers, some of our grade 10 and 11 students can travel to that area of Tanzania together to look at the projects that to provide some of the resources that might be hard to obtain there in Tanzania, to learn more about our service projects, and to come back inspired to continue to make a difference in the world. And we have an alumni, friends, uh, alumni and Friends Association, which is really active. Anybody who leaves our school, whether they graduate at the end of grade 12 or whether they move away again, become a part of this association. And we have a big map of the world online where you can look and see, hmm, if we're moving to Tokyo, what other MIS alumni are already in Tokyo, and you may hit the ground in Tokyo already having some contact coming from MIS. So I also think something quite special that deserves mention when talking about MIS is our campus. So you can see a picture of the campus there. Um, in the background is Lake Starnberg, which is the second largest lake in Germany. We have the Alps on the horizon, and then our school, which is in the middle of the woods, just outside of Starnberg, Germany. So we have an eight lane track and field. We're one of the only international schools in the world that can host um, multi-school track and field events. We have the six buildings that I talked about, and these buildings are where most of the teaching and learning takes place. Really a fabulous setting for kids to learn. So there are 25 acres that make up the campus, lots of room there for kids to play and learn outside. The Olympic sized eight lane track and field. We have a newly completed quadruple sports hall with dance studio and fitness center. We have a performing arts center, which is a large theater. Next week, we will be, uh, our senior school students will be performing the plot like gravy thickens for our community. Um, we have two amazing makers laboratories and maker spaces. The maker space is in the primary school and is available to students already beginning in the early years. The Maker's Laboratory is more than 500 square meters of space where students have access to 3D printers, to computer-guided computer routers, to all kinds of materials that they can use in the creation of individual projects. We have innovative science and technology laboratories. We have a full-service cafeteria where food is cooked fresh here on the campus, and our caterer serves completely organic meals. And we have a transportation service with our own director of transportation. We have more than 80 bus lines who bring the kids to school in the morning and transport many of them back home at the end of the day. So very quickly, just to share a little bit about where we're going, what we're currently working on. You can see a picture here of one of our recent graduates sharing um, the robotic arm that she built with a primary school student. So we're looking at taking even more advantage of the natural environment around our school. So looking for additional opportunities for students and teachers to engage with the mountains, the 
lakes and the forest that surround our school. We are currently in the process of bringing universal design for learning into the classroom, and that is a methodology by which teachers ensure that their instruction is reasonable and appropriate for every child who's in their care. We're looking at integrating more coding, computing, structured thinking across the entire program. We're looking at ways for students to give feedback to teachers on what's working for them and what could potentially work better. We're enhancing and increasing the number of real world links that we have to the world outside of our school. And we're really trying to focus on making learning feel important, relevant, meaningful, and manageable for all of our students. So whew, I will close today, I know that was a lot of information, by just sharing uh, the answer to one of the questions that I frequently get. So people will often say to me, why? Why would I want to bring my child to MIS? And my answers, you might get answers from other people, I really appreciate that we're a school where we can integrate student individual interests, needs, and goals into the curriculum. So many schools have a preset curriculum where they really can't um, vary from a preset set of things that students are going to learn every day. We, of course, have standards and we have goals to which toward we're working, but we also have the ability for students to make choices within that curriculum. And we find that that really increases motivation and relevance and helps students really engage emotionally with the work they're doing in school. We have truly outstanding teachers. And many of those teachers are the people who design and write the curriculum for for the International Baccalaureate, which is then taught in thousands of schools around the world. So they are real authorities in the IB's programs. They understand them extremely thoroughly. And they're really well positioned to help students be successful in that program. We have engaging future oriented curriculum that is rich with inquiry, technology, making, innovation and multimodal literacies. So it feels relevant and contemporary to students. It's a holistic program. We have social and emotional learning embedded in the curriculum. We include the arts, creativity, innovation, and inquiry in all phases of our education. We're on this beautiful 25 acre park like campus, and we have a community that is truly international and that welcomes new families and new students. So I hope that that was helpful to you. I realize it was a lot of information very quickly. But you have the opportunity to ask any questions you might have. And as a next step, I'm going to be talking to two teachers uh, who work at our school. So I wonder if we could have Sean Sweeney and Hans Schmidt turn on their cameras. Hi, Tim. Hi, Hello, Hans. Tim. Hi, Sean. Great. Would you two please introduce yourself to the people who are part of the presentation today? Sure, I'll start. Um, my name is Sean Sweeney and I've worked at MIS for the past four years. Uh, I work primarily at the school. Uh, I get the opportunity to work with students through a digital life course where we're helping to develop their skill sets using the iPads in the classroom as an instructional tool for their learning um, and stepping beyond that, you know that they have tended to use it as at home. Um, and then I also have the opportunity as an instructional coach to get into all of our classrooms in middle school to support teachers um, in their instructional design, whether it's helping them understand how to use technological tools as an instructional resource, or whether it's just collaborating and having extra set of hands um, and you know coaching students in um, how to approach their learning. So have a really fun job here. Um, yeah, despite my name, I'm Hans Schmidt. I'm from Australia and I've been here in Germany for the last four years with my wife and two children. And my children come to the school here and like Tim said, we love it here. Um, so I'm a senior school physics teacher. So that's with the diploma program up to year 12. And I also teach in the, the MYP for year 10 extended science. Um, so Sean and I work together on this strategic initiative that Tim mentioned about computational and structured thinking. And so we get to span both of the, the middle school and the senior school. And 
I think for both of us, we really like those transition years. So seeing students move from the junior school into the middle school and then from senior school onto university and in between. Um, yeah, so that's what some of the things that we really like. Um, and in the physics department, um, especially we're using lots of data. And so having a school wide approach to developing this structured thinking that's consistent everywhere it's it's really important. Great, thank you so much. So as you mentioned, you two are the chairs of a particular strategic initiative that we have that's a part of our future oriented curriculum. Would you like to tell everybody a little bit about what you're working on? Sure, so um, in our strategic initiative, we have three different pieces underneath our future aligned curriculum initiative. Um, and so different teams have taken on um, focus within those areas. Hans and I are focused on the school-wide uh, progression of learning uh, for um, computing and structured thinking. Uh, and so we're working with a team of teachers to develop and implement the learning opportunities around uh, those areas. All right, thank you very much. Could you maybe give us some examples of what that might look like? What might students be learning that would be considered computing in structured thinking? Yeah, so I mean, the important thing, well, the main focus for us is that we know that as technology is advancing and it's um, improved significantly, just even since both Sean and I were in high school, um, the things that computers can do for us has developed rapidly. And now our students are walking around with vast amounts of computational power in their pockets. And computers now are forming the role where we need to be kind of collaborators with computers, where we're getting computers to help us do things. And so this computational and structured thinking initiative at the school is to help build our students with the necessary skills and knowledge to learn how computers think, how to work with computers. Um, and Sean, you and I, we have talked a fair bit about chat GPT at the moment. It seems to be the hot topic. Um, in fact, I saw a news article saying that the state where I'm from in Australia has decided they're going to ban it in education departments. So it's, you know, being able to have necessary knowledge and skills to kind of deal with these technologies as they come up is something that Sean and I feel really strongly about and want to ensure that our students are equipped with the necessary skills to be able to handle that. Um, yes, yeah. so kind of building up what Hans is uh, talking about, so what the computational thinking, uh, which is a type of structured thinking. So of course you have design thinking uh, and other applied types of thinking models, uh, but computational thinking we're focused on this year and exploring that in the four different parts. So those parts are decomposition, uh, and that's about breaking down that big, big question. Um, and then from breaking down a big question that might seem unruly into smaller parts or smaller questions, uh, th then we start to collect some of that data uh, that we can use for pattern recognition. And Hans has talked a little bit about both of those. Um, and that goes back to that chat GTP example is, um, you know, all it has done is collected data samples um, and looked at various examples. I'm sorry if you heard in the background, we have students changing, so there might be a little noise there. Hope that get picked up. Mm -hmm. But um, so, so that's what the technology is doing doing today. AI is helping us use this um, these skills to do this much faster than we've ever been able to do before. And so when students and teachers can understand um, how technology is working through computational thinking, we're able to better prepare ourselves for um, what type of tools might be coming down the line and how that could help us do what we're doing. So from that pattern recognition piece, we start to look at abstraction. Uh, so how does that then overlay over a bunch of different areas? Um, and then finally, the algorithm that we would write to communicate with a computer uh, so that we can better um, collaborate with uh, computers uh, as we move forward and they become more intelligent. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so some examples, back to your question, sorry, Tim. <laughs> um, we have, uh, our team has all developed some different examples of lessons that we're implementing in the classroom. Um, just before break, we had a grade five team that was exploring this and through kind of a cycle of exploring um, how do we determine the volume of an object? And so they kind of kept going through this process uh, through those four different stages to kind of continue and break down that idea. And so students were exploring and coming to their own conclusions about how we generate uh, that algorithm. Uh, in the library, our, our librarian is leading uh, research through their process, right? We take a big question, we break it down, we use a variety of resources to identify the patterns of what is that common information that we want to know. Um, and then we, we break that into that abstraction of what's really, really important from that. Um, and then apply the algorithm as how do we write a good paper? Uh, and so we found a variety of this, this team, sorry, we can't take credit. Uh, <laughs> we're lucky to work on it, uh, has found a variety of places throughout our curriculum, K through 12, um, across content areas where we in fact um, are implementing not just through our coning classes, uh, where kids are getting exposure to kind of this thought process. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you so much. That's really fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. And we're really proud that we have educators who are leading initiatives like this in order to further develop our curriculum. I think this is one of the examples where this doesn't come directly from the IB. This comes from some of our own research and our own desire to ensure that the teaching and learning that's happening here is really addressing the real questions that kids have and the real things that they're gonna enter as adults in the future. And so really trying to set them up for success. So I'm really grateful cool. two of you are working on that project. Um, is there anything else that you wanna share about that project before we move on? Um, only that we, it, these are transferable skills that we're trying to you know, develop in our students so that they, they're in the English classroom and they go, oh, well, they're a really good um, persuasive text who has a paragraph structure that's this, this, and this, and this. So they can recognize where there's computational instruction thinking in, in something like that. Or if it's analyzing artwork and say, oh, well, in this piece of artwork, there's darker colors and the, the focus is drawn down here. So just being able to think computationally or even in a structured way that's transferable, that all our teachers are using the same language so that as our students go from room to room, there is, you know, transferable knowledge and skills, which is great to have a team from K to 12 working on this. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to share this with uh, the people who have joined us today. I really appreciate it. And most of all, I really appreciate that you're helping our school develop in this way. So thank you. No worries. We'll be sticking around at the end if you've got any more questions. Thanks, Tim. Thanks a lot, Tim. Super. So the next guest that I have the privilege of Introducing you to is a, an extremely important um, educator here at the school, and that is the leader of our early childhood in our primary program. That's our uh, junior principal, Mr. David Freed. So welcome, David. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Tim, and uh, thank you, Hans and Sean, for presenting earlier. Yes, my name is David Freed, and I am the principal of the junior school, which here represents early childhood. So students enter school as young as three, and they progress through the primary years program all the way up through fourth grade. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our school and about our program, and then I can be available afterwards to answer questions as well. Um, I am uh, actually a parent here at the school. I have three children. Two have already graduated, uh, one attending university in the U.S. and another one working, and I have an 11th grader. So I feel like I have a pretty well-rounded view of our school. Um, and I certainly know about the PYP, the primary years program, which is the elementary or primary years version of the international baccalaureate. We're fortunate here to have a, a true leading PYP program, one of a thousand schools around the world offering this rigorous, but also well-balanced program to support children's development. Children in the junior school, uh, they spend uh, throughout the day portions of their time in homerooms, they also attend daily German lessons. They uh, go to the art room and music for separate lessons. They have physical education. So it's truly a well-rounded experience, which provides some opportunities to learn and to develop all kinds of skills throughout their day. 
Many of our students do begin in the junior school learning English as an additional language. Uh, certainly in our lower grades, the majority of our students come in with very little uh, or no English language skills, and we're certainly prepared to help them. I know that's a question that many of our families have uh, when they're considering our school. Uh, we have uh, all of our teachers, whether they're art teachers, music teachers, homeroom teachers, uh, when they're teaching mathematics or physical education, they are all prepared to support students' language development and to provide the structure and the guidance they need to develop vocabulary and understanding. We also have a team of English as additional language teachers, uh, at least one per grade level, who work in the homeroom side by side with our teachers, as well as in small groups to help students develop their uh, understanding and their language skills. So uh, be, just please know that uh, coming into MIS and certainly into junior school, we are well prepared to help students uh, who are learning English as an additional language. We also have a very robust program of learning services or learning support. This could be for children who need a little extra boost in their reading, uh, perhaps some small group math work, or also children who come in with a special need who need additional assistance, again, individually or in small groups to support their learning in school. Uh, we also are very fortunate to have at least one full-time nurse at our school at all times. Uh, having a registered certified nurse is a huge, a wonderful resource uh, for us teachers, the administration, but also certainly our parents too, who can access a lot of medical information through, the, through their professional guidance. Uh, one very nice feature of our school um, is that we have a few different extended day opportunities. Uh, these are for parents who would like their children to spend a little bit of a longer school day. Uh, the normal school day is from 9.05 to 3.15. Uh, some of our early childhood students stay a little bit longer and they can stay with us till 4.30. Uh, being taught by teachers, playing outside, being engaged, engaged in games and activities. And more than a quarter of our school participates uh, from grades one through four in what we call after school care. Uh, after school care supervises students in their play, sometimes doing some extra uh, reading with students, giving them a snack all the way from 315 until 415, at which time they can then take the school bus home, perhaps with an older sibling. So it definitely provides families with some options for how long uh, they would like their children to be at school and the numbers of activities too. Uh, we believe very strongly here in the junior school and certainly as a PYP school that working as partners with you is hugely important for the development of your children and our students. Uh, we're prepared to participate with you and to communicate as much as we can uh, to support your understanding of our program, but also very importantly, how you can help your children at home to continue to grow and develop. A few ways that we do that, uh, all of our teachers communicate uh, through a program called Seesaw. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, communication tool. It also serves as a portfolio, uh, whereas an electronic portfolio that is, uh, where students uh, post uh, projects that they're working on, could be audio recordings, video recordings of recent work samples, their reflections on what they've learned, uh, what questions they still have and what their next steps are. And it's a fantastic tool uh, for us to communicate with you, for your children to communicate about their learning. And it really gives you a sort of a, a, a little viewpoint into what's going on in the junior school throughout the day. We also have regular events where we invite parents to come to our school. Uh, for example, tomorrow I will host uh, another a monthly parent principal forum. Uh, this topic uh, is of interest to, of course, uh, what we've just uh, been talking about recently through Sean Sweeney, who will be a guest at our Parent Principal Forum, presenting on computational thinking, artificial intelligence, and also, very importantly, how we teach our students to be good digital citizens and to make appropriate choices online and offline. In any case, so Parent Principal Forums are held on other topics too, how we teach mathematics and how families can help their children develop at home, as well as language and literacy. I also host monthly principals coffees. This is just a kind of an informal gathering of any parents who'd like to come, chat about the school, find out about what's new, ask questions, raise any concerns. It's also just a nice way for me to get to know more parents, but also a wonderful way for parents to meet other parents. And through the Parent Teacher Verine, there are plenty of opportunities for parents to be connected across of our, our entire school. Now, as uh, Tim Thomas mentioned, the teachers truly make a difference in our school, uh, making a difference for our students and our program, bringing the curriculum to life. 
We also are fortunate here to have a number of other uh, committed people here to uh, support all students. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have a full-time assistant principal. Uh, our assistant principal here oversees the development of our students' academic growth, but also their social and emotional well-being. We have a curriculum coordinator as well who meets with our teams of teachers to make sure that our, our curriculum is well aligned to the IB program, but also that it's meeting rigorous standards for assessment and making sure our students are progressing as they should be. Uh, we're also fortunate to have a school counselor who works in the classrooms, teaching our students conflict resolution skills, helping them manage their own emotions, and can also be available to teams of teachers as well as parents uh, for students who may need additional support. Um, as I like to say, there's something and someone for everyone here in our school, uh, and I certainly hope you consider joining MIS and particularly in the junior school. Uh, I'm going to stick around and answer questions later if there are any, uh, but at this time I would like to uh, pass the microphone and camera over to Natalie Millett, who is our middle school principal. Let's see if Natalie's there. There she is. Take it away. Hi everyone. I am uh, Natalie Millette and I am the middle school principal. I'm um, Canadian. I'm originally from Montreal. Um, I worked for over 20 years in IB schools in Toronto, Canada, and I taught history uh, both in English and in French. Um, I was also a curriculum coordinator, director of teaching and learning, and uh, most recently I was in Hong Kong at the Canadian International School of Hong Kong, where I was responsible for developing a new middle school program. So I'm really happy um, to have this opportunity to today to tell you about our really amazing middle school here at MIS. We have approximately 400 students uh, from grades five to eight. Um, I think that this is a really pivotal um, point of transition for students. They're transitioning from elementary to secondary education. And this period is really accompanied with uh, many uh, personal developments and, and social changes in children of this age. So we spend a lot of time uh, develop developing a program that is intended to support all students in their academic and social development throughout this time. So in the middle school, we focus on three essential attributes to help all students be successful during this period of transition. First, we want every student to feel um, a sense of belonging. Uh, we know that for middle school students, uh, they learn better when they feel a strong positive connection to both their peers and teachers. Um, feeling seen and heard by their teachers and supported by their classmates is really uh, pivotal so that middle, middle school students have the confidence to take the risks that are associated with learning. So we do a lot uh, throughout the day um, to emphasize that. For example, every student is part of a homeroom and they uh, go throughout the day in classes as a homeroom unit. And so that reinforces that sense of a belonging to a class. In addition, they start every day by meeting their homeroom teacher, again, to reinforce that sense of belonging to the adult. Uh, in almost all cases, the homeroom teacher will also teach one of uh, um, the subjects that the students complete uh, to that class to, again, reinforce that relationship. Secondly, we <clears throat> excuse me, we face uh, we place significant focus on learning how to learn. So this is beyond the content. Um, it really is focused on all of those skills that are required in order to learn. We know that as students are preparing for um, um, the future and specifically future learning in um, secondary school, so in high school, we want to ensure that they have uh, developed the independent Dependence that they'll need um, so that they can engage in more complex content uh, when they uh, begin senior school grades. And so we want them to be proficient in all of those skills 
that promote uh, independence of learning. For example, organization, time management, research skills, self-advocacy, uh, the ability to reflect in order to uh, improve, and also critical and creative thinking to tackle those uh, more complex problems. And so teachers in the middle school will build explicit teaching of these key skills that are linked to what the students are learning in their class and to the projects or assessments that the students are working on so that by the time students end grade eight, which is the end of middle school for us, they have begun to demonstrate some level of independence uh, in these skills. Obviously, there will be a, ver a varied level of proficiency for every student, and teachers will continue to support this, but we want to introduce the students in a very uh, methodical way to building these skills so that kids are actually able to identify which of those skills are areas of strength for them that they can rely on and they know that they have those areas of strength and also just as importantly which of those areas are things that may not be areas of strength that they actually need to focus on in every course so that they can be successful and thirdly we want students to develop a sense of who they are as individuals. So we know that this period of pre-adolescence and early adolescence is a time of significant personal growth and change um, in children. It's a time when relationships both with peers and with adults change and when children begin to develop new interests. So we want to encourage students to go through this transition, this personal transition. We want them to interact with more peers, to take the risk of making new friends, uh, interacting with their teachers, uh, trying out new activities, uh, considering different perspectives, um, having rich, rich lived experiences um, so that we can encourage them to think about their personal qualities and the characteristics that they want to develop in themselves moving um, into the future. So we want them to really have a sense of who they are and also who they want to be. So starting in grade five, um, our students will begin the middle years program within the IB. So they complete the PYP or primary years program at the end of grade four, and then we'll begin the middle years program. Um, they will study standalone subjects. So mathematics, science, individuals and societies, which is uh, an integrated humanities course. Um, and all of our courses focus on real world connections. Again, we know that students are at this age in particular, they want to know about the world beyond the classroom. And they also want to be able to feel that they can engage productively with some of the complex challenges that our society is facing. And so we really do work on creating curriculum that helps students to consider their place in the world as well as in their local community and how they can become active and engaged global citizens. All of our students learn both English and German, either as a mother tongue or as an additional language. We have um, a, a large group of teachers who specialize in language acquisition to help students who are learning English or learning German. Sometimes they're learning both. Um, in grade six, our students have the option to add a third language. Uh, and currently we offer as a third language, French, Spanish, and Mandarin integrated into our program. In addition, we have a wide variety of mother tongue languages um, that can be organized either during the school day or after school. And so if a student uh, is coming uh, to school, for example, um, with uh, Japanese as a mother tongue or, or Portuguese or Italian, uh, although we can't offer those languages as part of our, our, our regular curriculum, students do have the opportunity to study with an outside teacher here at school. Um, all of our students will also take design, and um, this is a course in which they learn to apply the design cycle, and they will have an option to choose between product design, food design, so they work in a kitchen, and that's a really popular course, or digital design. Um, all of our students, Sean mentioned this before, she is our um, digital life 
teacher. And in that course, the students learn about um, their digital responsibility um, and how to use their technology as instruction as an instructional tool. These we think are really important because we want students to make responsible and safe decisions when it comes to using technology and also to understand that the technology is a, a very important um, learning tool, but it is an enhancement to their learning. So we don't want them using it simply um, as a you know glorified typewriter. We want them to really know how to dig into that tool and to use it to um, add to their learning. Our MYP program focuses on deep, authentic learning for middle school students. We want to make learning fun so that students remain engaged and they remain motivated to challenge themselves um, continuously throughout middle school. Um, just like in the junior school, we have um, a rich support system for our students. In particular, we have um, several learning support teachers and they help all students to identify how they learn best. We really want students to think about uh, themselves as individuals and to be able to identify, as I said before, um, the uh, areas in which or the ways in which they learn best. We also support students who may have some learning differences in order to help them to manage those learning differences and again to be able to leverage their strengths. So um, and we think that this is really important so that all students can can uh, become independent learners. Um, we also have, as I said before, um, a team of English as additional language teachers to support all students who are um, in uh, various phases of learning English as an additional language. Um, we have a full time guidance counselor who specializes in this age group and in helping students to manage all of the complexities that come with being a uh, almost or new teen. Um, and finally, just like in the junior school, we have a wide variety of after school activities for students. They can join um, a whole range of activities. There's something for everyone. And we also have a selection of activities during the school day for students who may want a little bit more structure uh, in addition to various clubs and student leadership opportunities. So um, our middle school is really a, a, a fun, exciting, very busy place uh, for students. Um, they are supported by a large group of really dedicated teachers who, um, who try to make learning an adventure every single day. So that's it for me. Um, I will also be here if you have any other questions and I will turn it over, I believe, to our senior school principal who is coming on now, Mr. Carlson. Thank you so much. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, I am Anders Carlson. I've been at MIS for 10 years. Uh, before that, I worked at various schools in, in different countries and I'm uh, originally from Sweden. So the senior school is grade nine till 12, uh, where nine and 10 is one entity and 11 and 12 is another entity. Grade nine and 10, that is the continuation of the middle school. That's the continu continuation of the MYP. And when they enter grade nine, of course, they study the course of like English, German, maths, science and humanities and PE. But then they can also choose from a large number of subjects like French, Spanish, Mandarin, arts, drama, music design, coding, uh, second humanities, a second science, journalism, and we have a special course about German politics taught in German. <clears throat> Grade 11 and 12, that is the diploma program, which Tim talked about at the beginning. Students select six subjects and here at MIS they can choose from 52 courses, not 52 subjects, but 52 courses. At the end of grade 10, sit external examinations called the e-assessment and uh, which they then use when they apply to university and these exams also give uh, the possibility for German students to get the Mittlere Schulabschluss. Uh, 
And at the end of grade 12, students sit the um, IB exams, uh, which take them to university. Uh, universities all over the world. Most of our students would go to the United States or to the UK. Um, but for German students who want to study in Germany, uh, these exams are or equivalent with the Abitur. Now, we have a guest here today. It's a former student. She graduated last year. And Chiara, are you there? Hello, yes, I'm here. Hi. We, we, we can't see you, right? I have my camera on. OK. Uh, so Chiara, who are you? Hi, now, now we can see you. Where are okay. you? And introduce yourself. Yourself, please. Yes, so my name is Chiara Jasmine Hoffman Kunt, and I'm currently in Amsterdam actually studying biomedical sciences, and I am a graduate from the class of 2022. Good. And you were here for six years. First, when you were younger, and then I, as far as I can recall, you went to Canada, and then you came back in, in uh, grade 11. Yes, exactly. How was that? How was it to come back in grade 11? to start here. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I knew that the entire time that I left Munich International School, I wanted to come back. And so I made sure that that was an opportunity for me. So initially, um, I was born in Florida in the US and I attended Western Academy of Beijing in China for six years. And then when I moved to um, Germany, I stayed here for only four years uh, for grades two to five. And then I moved to Montreal, Canada, where I attended a girls' school. So it was a very different environment. And I graduated from there in 2020 with a high school diploma, but I still needed to do a pre-university program. And so I thought that the International Baccalaureate would be the perfect choice for me. And so I'm very happy that I did that. And I ended up graduating as one of the valedictorians last year. So it was good. You did. Yeah. Certainly did. How many languages do you speak? I speak five languages. <laughs> uh, which are those languages? Yes, so my mom is Portuguese, so I speak Portuguese, my dad is German, I speak English, Spanish, and I had to learn French in Montreal, obviously. So the big mix, but it's very nice. <laughs> and what about Dutch? You you live in Amsterdam now. <laughs> on the way, I have, that's the next one on the list. <laughs> okay. You know a lot about MIS, you've been here twice. What do you appreciate about MIS? Yes, so I, I have a lot of different experiences because I, I was there for um, split up time. And so from junior school, I know what I really wanted to come back to was all of the resources that I had and all of the memories that I made from it. I've been playing flute for 10 years and I actually started my lessons at MIS before school. I, every week I would have my flute lessons and I also play piano. I've been paying for 14 years now, and I also took lessons at MIS. And so music was really integrated in my life. I was in the choir, I was in the band, I was in the play. There were so many opportunities, so I took on all of them. And also just sports as well. I tried very random sports because that's what I really enjoyed. I did karate and gymnastics and ski Saturdays. And even when I came back in senior school, I did some soccer as well, even though I've never tried it. It was, I was very free to do what I wanted to, and I really enjoyed that. And, um, in senior school, because I was only only there for two years and COVID kind of broke into it, I had less chances to do things, but I still experienced a lot. I was able to participate in Model United Nations, and I also had more access to resources. I was actually nominated for an award by Zonta International for um, Young Women in Public Affairs, and I actually got the first place award, and now I've been meeting women all over Germany, and this is an international organization. So now. I've gotten the chance to network and meet other women who are also passionate about community service. And so, yeah, I've been experiencing so much just for my little time at MAS, and I'm sure that students that have been there longer than me were able to do so much more. So it's really great. As far as I can remember, you were also engaged in a refugee project, right? Yes, exactly. Um, anyway. So I can explain a bit yeah, about tell, that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, please. Yeah. So um, this is called Berg Refugee Initiative. Berg is the town close to Munich International School. And it was a community service project that was started by a previous student two years prior to myself. Um, and so when I took over in grade 12, we basically were able to have more contact with the kids and I organized 
a lot of different projects where students could go and teach immigrant children German. And so we did that two times a week at a school and two times a week at a refugee camp that was nearby and also privately for families that wanted some private tutoring for their children to learn either English or German. And so it was a great opportunity for students to meet other children and also work together with, with, with other people who are passionate about community service. And it was also very nice for myself because I learned a lot about organization and it was also a very gratifying experience. And so I really enjoyed how MIS really put emphasis on doing community service work because it's also important along with academics and um, hobbies and sports and everything. Because then I I know that you had you put a lot of hours into studying because you got top scores. Yeah. Anyway, so sure. of all these things, when you look back, what do you appreciate most about, about these years at MIS? Yeah, so I definitely think that the most important thing that I've learned through my years was being able to balance my life. I always had a lot going on, obviously, with my hobbies, but also my sports and my service work. And so I think the most important thing that I got out of it was learning how to manage it because I always prioritize my academics and it's obviously going to get a bit stressful, but being in such a warm and motivating environment, I was always extremely close to my teachers and I still catch up with them when I can. And I think the the way that I was motivated was because of the people around me and being able to stay motivated while doing so many things helped me get successful. And now I'm having a great time at university. And I definitely think that the International Baccalaureate specifically gave me the best foundation of understanding for my course because it is challenging. But I think the effort that I had to put into it in high school was very rewarding now. So I'm grateful for it all. So uh, my last question, because you now at university, as you say, how did MIS prepare you for your studies at university? Yeah, so I think MIS, the teachers definitely really supported me and I was able to ask questions and now I'm not afraid to ask questions. They helped me plan my studying and I think being able to feel comfortable in the way that you study is so important in order to do well in school. And I know a lot of people that still have question marks, but I feel confident and I think that confidence came from the support that I had and also being able to enjoy school as well, just because of all the activities I had going on. It was, although it was a bit stressful at times, it was enjoyable and I wouldn't have had it any other way. So, yeah. So Kiart, thank you so much and uh, good luck in your studies. Thank uh, you. Now I uh, give the floor back to uh, Kim. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anders. Um, I actually, if you can stay there for a second, Anders, because I have a question for you, because many of our parents, um, in um, um, when they come and meet us during a visit, ask us how can we support um, students when they enter senior school, and Kino asked as well, we have great results, but um, does this come um, at a cost for the student's stress level? So how do we deal with that? Yeah, so the first question, when students are new here, uh, we, have a, we have a system to sort of welcome them. There's a buddy system, uh, so some and other students take care of them. And then, of course, our counsellors and our uh, assistant principal, they're very much uh, looking after these new students. Since basically all students have been new here at one, well, all students have been new here at one point, but many have been there for one year only, or two years only, or four years. So they know what it is like to be new. And therefore, they new students settle in very quickly because they, mm -hmm. everyone has been been through this. The second question about stress level, yes. It, when you are in grade 12 in the winter, uh, students, there's pressure. That's The IB is certainly demanding. And uh, uh, then when students leave uh, the, us here, they say that they get their re uh, reward is that they get so well prepared for university. But yes, it's yeah. stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have here um, another question for Natalie. Thank you, Anders. Um, hi, Natalie. Um, so one of the questions that a parent um, had is how quick will children integrate if they do not speak 
English. Um, how? Sure. Yeah. So it really depends on the student. So first of all, all students are integrated into a homeroom. So whether or not they speak English, they will still on the very first day of school, meet their homeroom teacher, meet a buddy. Um, we'll try to set them up with a buddy from their class who speaks the same language as them or a buddy who we feel will be able to communicate in different ways uh, yeah. if we don't have someone of the same language. So they are in all the same classes. For students who don't yet speak English, they're assigned to um, an EAL, English um, as an additional language teacher, who will um, support them both by placing them in a different English class. So they won't be in the mainstream class. They'll be in a class with other students who are learning English. And then in their other lessons, they will be supported by the teacher of that course um, to support them in terms of vocabulary. This is an example of where we make use of our um, iPads as instructional tools because for some of our students, they will benefit from almost having simultaneous translation. So, and we show them how to do that if they don't yet know how to do it. Um, so our, uh, within the class, the teachers primarily support the students in engaging in the material as best they can. And the EAL teacher will also drop into that class to support those those students a little bit more. Uh, and so it really is a very flexible approach. Uh, in addition to that, things such as assessments will modify assessments so that students are doing what they can do to demonstrate their, um, their understanding. Our report cards will also be modified for those students so that we're focusing again on what they can do based on their language level. We pro we um, will do we'll use um, external tests called a WIDA test to determine the growth of the student. And when we um, have determined that the student is proficient enough in English that they can manage, we'll slowly transition them out of the EAL class and into mainstream English classes with support as needed. Thank you. Could you also maybe um, give a little bit um, um, more details about the homework policy in middle school? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So obviously homework um, does um, appear for students a little bit more in middle school. However, uh, you know, the teachers take a smart approach to homework. One of the things we know is that it does absolutely no good to have a miserable child at home who is hating every second of doing homework. Mm -hmm. And so we think about what is absolutely necessary for a student uh, in order to be able to consolidate their learning that they had during that day at home. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, courses such as mathematics and also those additional languages that really benefit from having students practice um, and review immediately before they forget um, are courses where they will have a little bit of homework on most nights. And then after that, they may be doing some reading. Um, they may need to finish up some work. Um, but our my guidance to the teachers is that homework is a tool that students should be using to further their knowledge. It shouldn't be additional learning. It shouldn't be, um, you know, the traditional idea that you do homework because you do homework uh, really doesn't make a lot of sense. So homework is there. It is it is targeted. So a student who is very quick and can learn math very quickly doesn't need to do a lot of practice to yeah. understand the concept. There's no reason for them to do that homework. Mm -hmm. But for a student who requires a little bit more time to mm -hmm. practice so that they themselves can be confident, we will encourage them to do more homework. Okay. Thank you very much, Natalie. Sure. Um, David, I have a few questions for you too. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Hi, Hi. David. Um, there was one particular question uh, about when do we start teaching math, reading and writing? And is this taught in English or German? Okay, great question. 
I think that uh, answering this question can help me explain a little bit more about our junior school, um, the population of students that we have, as well as our approach. Um, certainly uh, due to the diversity of our student population, diversity of nationalities, cultural language backgrounds, as well as previous educational histories, uh, we do not have a particular timeline for how and when we teach students, uh, simply because when we have students entering our school, we have some of our students starting as five-year-olds uh, reading uh, because they've been given instruction in their previous uh, school experiences. Uh, and for example, we may have other students starting when they're six and seven who've had no reading instruction in their home countries uh, and previous learning experience. So our approach to, for example, specifically how we teach reading, we teach reading when the students are ready. Uh, from an early age, from ages four all the way up, we provide a developmental approach to literacy. We're teaching about phonemic awareness, phonological knowledge, providing the students sort of the foundations, the literacy uh, foundational blocks for when they start demonstrating that they are prepared to read. Then we start providing more instruction. Uh, as I said, uh, we need to be responsive to where the students are developmentally and based on their previous history. So much of our instruction does happen in small groups uh, or individually. And so we're not teaching a one size fits all approach, but truly how we teach reading as well as our mathematics program is based on uh, the students prior knowledge and what they're uh, what they're prepared for and what they're ready to learn next. So it's truly a developmental approach an approach recognizing that children come from a, a range of backgrounds and we need to be prepared and ready to teach all students. Um, a little bit more to answer that specifically how we teach reading. Uh, in relation to German. Uh, we do have a very uh, hearty German program where we follow the Bavarian state curriculum, uh, particularly for our students who are uh, mother tongue German speakers. So even from the early grades and early childhood all the way up through grade four, our students who are mother tongue German receive literacy instruction and support mm -hmm. so that as they progress through the years in their German program, they do indeed learn to read and they learn to write. Uh, in their German language, uh, using their German language skills. And that learning continues in through the middle school and uh, off into the senior school as well. Uh, mathematics is taught through EAL uh, for our students who are learning English as an additional language, excuse me. So all content areas are taught in a way where our EAL or English learners can learn and develop the skills as well. Uh, for example, I was in a grade two classroom, so these are seven and eight year olds uh, just yesterday, and uh, there were three students who during the lesson had an iPad on their desk and they were using a Microsoft Translator app to help them understand some of the questions and to be able to write and respond to some of the prompts. Uh, we also use a buddy system so students can help translate for each other uh, and our EAL team, our English teaching team, also provides a lot of vocabulary support so that the students can access the curriculum in whatever subject they're focused on. Yeah. I hope that so, answered the question there. Yeah, so um, I, I think so. And, and, and to be clear, so the um, and our instructions are in English, um, except of course when we teach a foreign language. In, That's or correct. German. Primary uh, language of instruction is in English. Yeah. Students do attend German lessons daily from grades uh, one through four. And as uh, uh, Natalie mentioned for the middle school, we also have students attending mother tongue lessons. Uh, yeah. Some of our students may be taking uh, Dutch uh, or Mandarin, any number of mother tongue languages at lunch or after school. OK, um, I think um, we're a little bit over uh, uh, the time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for uh, joining us today. Um, so some questions might have remained unanswered, but uh, we'll get back to them um, um, by email. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for taking part today. And um, if you haven't done so already, we um, would like to suggest that you watch our MIS school film or have a look at our virtual school tour, uh, which are all both available on our website. Here at MIS, uh, we understand that choosing the right school for your child is an important decision. And the admissions team is here to support you and hopefully makes this decision uh, easier. If you would like to arrange an individual call or if you would want to come 
and visit our campus, um, whether you're considering MIS for this year, next year, or in the future, um, we'll be delighted to help you. If, um, as I said, um, if your question is unanswered, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Finally, uh, enjoy the rest of your day uh, wherever you are. Stay safe and healthy, and we hope to hear from you again. Thank you very much. Bye for now.